uh, we are deeply impressed by System Crasher, so congratulations for this movie. Some movies, uh, especially conventional cinema, in conventional cinema, uh, we see that uh, little girls uh, be represented by directors as a, a little cute girls. Yeah. So in this movie, uh, this cuteness represented the uh, opposite way. So which causes did you do this uh, choice? I think it was a very personal reason. Uh, maybe I was as a child not very cute, <laughs> let's say, and uh, had a lot of energy and I always wanted to make a film about a wild or angry, angry little girl mm -hmm. because I also felt that in cinemas little girls always, they look cute and they have big beautiful eyes and they are silent and they watch and you feel pity for them sometimes but they, they don't have really much energy. I was looking for a story for many, many years actually to find a script I could write with an angry girl. It was not so easy. Mm -hmm. And then when we made a documentary about a home for uh, homeless women, like a shelter home where a lot of women live and they don't have any home, and then a 14-year-old girl moved in. And that was the moment when I thought, like, what's why is a 14-year-old girl in this shelter home? And then the social worker said, oh, she's a system crasher, we can take her in. And that was the moment when I thought, oh, that's interesting. What's a system crasher? And that's how... After this point, yeah. you uh, yeah. decide uh, to make this movie. Uh, especially American independent cinema, uh, we know that uh, a variety of conflict between individuals uh, and the governmental uh, institution. Uh, however, uh, in Germany, in this movie, uh, this system works very good and uh, nicely. Is this a utopic approach or uh, that's a complete true approach uh, in Germany? It happened after research. Because at that point when I met this girl in this institution and I thought I, I want to write a script about it, I started to make a long research. It was, I think, for two or three years. Not every day, but I was two weeks in a children's home or one week in a child psychiatry. And at first I thought, oh, the system's wrong and the system is bad and poor children. But after being in all these institutions, I always found human beings working in the system. Okay. Because what's the system? At the end, it's also human beings. And most of them start their jobs for really personal and good reasons, because they want to help children. And then the, the framework they have to work in can get really complicated, you know. But I think everyone who works in the system actually tries to do something good from the heart. In your movie, there are uh, multiple fake endings, uh, especially last uh, 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> can we learn uh, what kind of this choice? It's hard to say because it's not a rational choice, you know. It's when you write a script, it's some very intuitive process. And you just feel like, okay, no, it's not, not the end yet. It's maybe the end of one story. It's maybe the end of Benny and Micha's story. But it's not the end of Benny's story. And there is a point where you could end the film and where it could be a really dark ending. And I don't want to spoil too much because maybe people haven't seen the film. But for me, that was not the real ending for Benny because she's so powerful and she has so, so much energy. So she has to survive in a way, and this film is about surviving, and there needs to be hope. Um, the story was an uh, intense dramatic approach, as you said. Um, however, Sam Crasher's narration uh, focuses on <coughs> character's dynamic, this dynamic construction also. Uh, and the movie uh, didn't turn into a, a melodrama. This is a choice, actually. Uh, what's your opinion when you do this? I mean, uh, when you meet children, even in very bad conditions, even children who, are, who have a lot of violence at home or they can't live with their parents or stuff, the, the children, most of them, always still have a great energy. They still are able to play and laugh, you know. So make a film about this theme and just make it dark and sad, you know. For me, that would be the approach of an adult looking down on the situation of the child. And, I wanted to bring Benny's energy to be the energy of the movie. And it was, I tried to write the script in a way that there is no antagonist from outside, but like the biggest antagonism is inside herself.
And that was not easy to write a character like this, that you have to love her, but you feel for her, for herself at the same moment. Last question. This is your first feature movie um, and your uh, direction spotlights in Bernale and this movie uh, has um, many success in there. Uh, what's, uh, what about uh, your next works and uh, are there any movie preparations or um, some any works? Other yeah. works? I mean it's, it's our first feature fiction film. We made a long documentary before with the same team, same DOP, same editor, same musician and uh, so the team I work with they are also my friends in a way and we worked together since eight years since film school and uh, so for us it was really lucky you know but even if the film wouldn't have been at Berlinale we would I think go on similar steps together and try to ne make the next film and um, yeah now we are really lucky that Benny can travel around, you know, and meet international audiences. So that that was very great for us. And I'm writing now the next, next film. Week. It's an idea I have since 12 years already, always carrying around. <laughs> you know, I'm like a penguin, you know, when they carry around their eggs all the time and really slowly. Suppose some people work maybe faster and work on seven movies at the same time and I'm very slow with this. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you.